All right, I wanted to film from the roof. At, uh, I'm here in Red Rock in the parking garage. Way, way too windy. Just saw a movie here. Snuck in a foot-long turkey sandwich, which, you know, it's child's play for me because I'm the best at sneaking food into places. But beyond that, snuck in mayo packets because this isn't, this isn't the minor leagues, all right? I'm not eating a sandwich, whatever the circumstances, I'm not eating a sandwich without condiments. So I'm gonna go play after I film and uh, watch this nice uh, transition shot and then meet me back here. So another edition of uh, Las Vegas Poker Differences. This is, uh, yeah, you can see, tell from the title, Marathon Sessions. So at some point, a marathon session has to include overnight and that's really the key difference when you get to the like beyond midnight portion of your marathon session one of the reasons it's way different in vegas people show up like fully rested in vegas doesn't happen so much in other cities if people show up really late like after 10 p.m they didn't like sleep and like plan to sleep all day and then play poker they were like doing things all day they might have been up at like 6 a.m., they're tired, and then they really want to play, so they come to the casino to play poker, but they're not rested. There are people who show up like really, really fresh and like starting their session at midnight, and it just doesn't make, it doesn't make for a, as fun of a game, it doesn't make for as profitable as a game. In other cities, it's like tired people who are like joking, they're at the end of their day, it's like really fun. They're making their they're making bad mistakes out of the sleep deprivation, and uh, just way different. So, Vegas, you have the most people who like make sure they sleep from like 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. and then like exercise and then like eat broccoli and chicken and then show up to the casino and start their session at midnight. And yeah, games still go, of course, but it's not not nearly as fun. It's not nearly as social. It's not uh, nearly as profitable, so that's one of the reasons. Second reason is, in Vegas, more than any other city, people love hitting and running. So, if you're playing in like St. Louis, someone shows up at 10 p.m. to play poker. Like, that person's playing for a while. That person, like, all day was waiting till he or she was free to get to the casino to get a session in. That person is not gonna, I don't know where this car's going. That person is not going to, uh, you know, play 24 minutes, win one medium-sized pot, and then take off. So, in Vegas that happens plenty, and that results in two different things. One thing it results in is shorter stacks when you're playing deep. That was one of my favorite parts of playing deep when I started playing in uh, Milwaukee. Potawatomi just reopened poker, by the way. Uh, I hear, I wasn't there, but... Uh, yeah, people were like playing all day, and like they're deep, and it's like... You know, you could size up and people would barely notice. Like, early in the night, you know, 25 pre might be a big bet, it might put people on alert. But then when like, most of the table is more than 600 deep, like they don't, they don't even think twice about it. For one, they're tired, but also just because they look down at their stack and they have so much money, they don't care about like a $25 raise. You could size up and like get away with things you wouldn't normally get away with earlier in the night or if uh, the whole table were shallower. So that's, awesome it still happens in other cities in vegas as a result of the hitting and running if you happen to get new players they're shallow you know they have to buy in for table stakes yeah mgm golden nugget they're uncapped some other places are like 400 500 but still it's uh it's different and i alluded to the second reason the second reason is if they leave and don't get replaced at all then like you're short which i don't like and you're also on the verge of breaking why is that guy's car so loud? You're also... I'm sure everyone that person knows, knows that he's a jerk. He doesn't need to do that with his truck to prove it. Anyway, uh, yeah, you're just, you're on the verge of braking when people hit and run. You don't get a ton of traffic coming in to like start sessions at uh, whatever it is, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight, 1 a.m., so. When people leave, not only do they leave and that person was only like fairly deep in his stack for like three minutes, he locked up a win and he left. There's just an empty seat there now. Like it would have actually been better if that guy 
whatever. He sat with three, he's like still with three playing rather than he gets up to 450 and instantly, that wasn't a good snap. And instantly walks away. That still wasn't a great one, but it was better than the first two. So hitting and running is another big problem. Something else that happens, I guess number three here, is that the fun rooms aren't 24 hours anymore. So it's impossible for them to go all night. You can't play a marathon session in some places. Uh, I'm thinking mostly of, for one, Sahara. Sahara is a ton of fun, but it closes. They don't have a huge staff is a part of the reason. There was a time, what was it, last year? I remember mentioning on camera, we're like supposed to close at three. The floor let us play till four. He had to lock his drawer behind the podium with the, the cash and the chips. So you couldn't add on anymore, but he agreed to stay, the dealer agreed to stay, and we got an extra hour at Sahara, which was awesome. As soon as he said that, I bought 500 in greens in case anyone wanted to add on or rebuy. I was the bank at that point, but Sahara closes. Also, uh, Mandalay. Mandalay's still not even seven days a week. There are some really great games at Mandalay sometimes, and I remember in like late 21, it wasn't even staying open past the tram. I was always aware of like the tram back to Excalibur, which then I could walk to MGM, take the monorail, or like maybe I parked at Aria or something. The tram from Mandalay to Excalibur would close at 11, and maybe the, maybe the room closed at 11, so with like 15 minutes left, I had to always be aware, is this game so good I need to play the last 15 minutes before the room closes, or go get the, uh, the tram back to Excalibur so I don't have like a massive walk back to my car. And uh, it often didn't matter, because it, 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 was, it was so close, whatever, it wasn't a big deal. If I had to miss the last 15 minutes to get the, the tram, it wasn't a huge factor, but uh, there were times once it started closing later, yeah, I played until the very last, once it became a matter of hours. I don't, I don't remember exactly, it was closing at like 2 a.m. maybe, so at like 10.45, I make that decision. Is this game so good I'm gonna stay? which means I'm gonna to have to walk from Mandalay back to Excalibur and then be where the tram would have dropped me off. And it was like, yes, this game is so good. Yes, I wanna play another two and a half, three hours on this table. I don't care how far I have to walk. This game is amazing. But even so, even when I did that, still, the game ends at three and it's not like you could play till like 8 a.m. or something. And the last thing, thing number four, people here are like very, it's a very psychological thing. I feel like it doesn't take much here for someone to leave. If someone's like playing, maybe even playing for like four hours, okay, and is willing to play for like another six, like one bad dealer ruling, one bad floor ruling, one like extra long fill at the table that kind of pauses the game, one person getting up from the table, like, creates a cascade of other people getting up from the table. It doesn't take nearly that much for the game, for like a great game to like instantly become no game at all and just collapse. In other cities, like, I don't know, there, there's a bad ruling, like the guy's just mad and he keeps playing. Or I mean, it's probably a ruling that makes sense, the guy just doesn't like it. But the guy's like mad for a minute and then he keeps playing. Uh, someone leaves and it's like, all right, we were playing eight-handed, now we're playing seven-handed. We're gonna keep playing. And uh, the only other city that is kind of close to this is Atlantic City, specifically Borgata, because of the way they do fills. It's odd, I've never seen it like this anywhere else. The rake doesn't go down a chute. The rake goes into the rack. And if you put cash on the table to add on or rebuy, a chip runner doesn't take it to the cage. That cash goes down a chute as if you're putting cash on the table at a blackjack table. It's odd. So when you need a fill, you have to call in a security guard who comes over with that, uh, that box with the handle, that plastic box, and you can see through the walls and you can see the chips and fills at Borgata, even though they're infrequent because the rack is so big and they're doing it this way, when you do need a fill, it takes a while. And sometimes at like 3 a.m., people understanding the game is gonna be paused for like five plus minutes, that kind of causes things to break down. People like, who like, they were in like a zombie state and all of a sudden this happens, this long fill is coming in and people start racking up because like, they were kind of like alerted that like something different happened and now they go get racks and they leave, so. Uh, yeah, but usually, besides that, 
Um, it's like a Vegas compared to everywhere else thing. So I love playing marathon sessions. I actually, I'm telling you this video because in the days five and six of the challenge I just did, I played back to back 12 hour days and I was looking through my stats the last time I played consecutive 12 hour days. It was uh, February 4th and February 5th, 2022. There were some close calls. There were a few times I played like 11 and a half or even like 11.9 and then followed by a 12, but I was strictly looking at a 12 and a 12. So that was a long time ago. Um, I love playing marathon sessions. I feel like I lose my mental ability a lot slower than other people. So if I'm playing like after being awake for 15 hours versus someone, versus someone else, that's a huge advantage. Love playing marathon sessions. When I moved here in 2015, because of all the marathon sessions I had played in Wisconsin before I moved here, I thought at least once a month I would play a 24 hour session. Then I lived here for two years, it didn't happen once. Uh, there were some long ones, but never 24 hours. And uh, it just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not the same. Still love, uh... all right, security's, security's show, rolling up on me here. Kinda. You didn't see that golf cart, you heard it. I don't know if it's security or maintenance, but I'm gonna go back to uh, the casino now. Um, so yeah, you know, Vegas is cool in that games are running. If you want to play a 100 hour week, the games are there. If you want to play 30 hours in a row, the games are there, you might have to switch casinos, but the games are there. But to have that like one great table last for like 10, 12 hours with barely any change in the players, I love that specifically, that type of marathon session, and uh, you just don't see that around Vegas so much. And remember, rice is a spoon food.